What's good with YouTube? Y'all already know Big Flocker with the Convicts Reaction where I smash, dash, and react. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel, and hit that bell notification for future fire content. Now, there was an incident that happened on the L.A. beach, I believe Doc Weiler Beach or something like that. And a video has gone viral and it shows a young black teen being, after he tried to help one of his friends, being beat, stabbed, and just basically victimized by five Hispanic alleged gang members based upon the fact of some of the language that was being heard. Now, what triggers such a response? I don't know. This was at a bonfire, and apparently the the young black kid that was attacked, right, teenager, he was what you call a good student, a good kid, helped out in the community, helped out with his family, was everything you can want in a son. Now, there was racial slurs being thrown, there was gender slurs being thrown, and all kinds of terrible stuff, right? Now, I was listening to uh, Hoodie, Hoodie from the Hood, right? And he was talking about it, man, and he made some key points that this stuff still goes on, right? And and some of the stuff, demeanors of these kids that they're speaking on is coming from a lot of it, the black culture, which is true. The gang aspect and some of the language that you hear them speaking is definitely them copying some of the ways in which black gangs communicate out there on the streets. Now, it's unfortunate that we're in 2024 and there's been so much, you know, it, so much advancements as far as in relationships, but there's been so much setbacks as well. And Hoodie kind of alluded to that, right? Now, in me watching all this, I've been watching something uh, out of the su Southern podcast and Southern rappers in like the last two months. And there's one individual who's really stood out amongst others as far as trying to build solid rapport and relationships with other blacks, whether they're Crips, Bloods, whatever they may be. If you're from L.A., you're from L.A. And that is lefty gunplay. Now, listen to some of the language that these kids used while they were beating this, this young uh, man or young uh, teenager. Dead homies, right? On dead homies, you know what I'm saying? On gang. All this stuff is stuff that you've heard from people like Swifty Blue and now Lefty Gunplay. Now, Lefty has really made a, how you call it, a huge effort to show that he supports his L.A. black community. That just because he's a South Side Sureño and that sometimes there's been differences in the past, he's trying to build solid reports today. And he's built them in, in the county jail and in prison and whatnot. And that's the one thing I give Lefty the um, utmost respect is he's been different as opposed to other rappers who've kind of stepped away from these issues. And it's just pure South side. He's been willing to go above and beyond what's been normal for years in these communities. Therefore, I think this is a grand opportunity for him to actually speak out about this incident because these are young gang members that are using language that he uses in his raps and his videos. And so I'm pretty sure these are probably young kids that even looked up to Lefty. You know, this is an opportunity, like I said, right? There's a lot of healing that needs to be done before there's a complete overall change. There's going to be racism. There's going to be issues. There's going to be old hate from years ago. But with each step forward, you don't have to take a step backwards. Now, you also have other podcasts from down south that have built reports, right? You know, none of them as strongly and as fast as Lefty has, but they're, they're there. And, you know, my suggestion, advice... And this goes with all these issues because every time there's an issue that's black or brown related, right? If it's a brown individual being the victim, the brown get on there and they, they, you know, they voice their opinion, their efforts and whatnot. And you have some people that will overstep boundaries in certain things they say. But then you also will have people on the other side who will become defensive, right? And say, well, what about you guys did this or you did that? A lot of that, yes, we understand you can't change. There's a, a lot of shit that's fucked up that's happened. But it takes us away from the current issues. And always remember, keep things current. Don't worry about what happened 15, 20, 30 years ago because you're not going to change that. But you can't change it now. And see, that's the bis biggest obstacle I've seen whenever there's been any black and brown issues in Southern California is as one side expresses how they feel about something, a current issue. The other side is quickly to become defensive and use stuff from the past. Well, what about this? And what about that? What about over here? And this could be some six months, year, two years, three years, whatever it may be. 
we forget it wasn't that long ago that one of the Crip factions out there DP'd their own for robbing a palatero, an old man in the neighborhood. And that was the sign of respect that, you know, this Crip faction had for, you know, hey, we're not going to be the ones that are going to be shit disturbers out here. We're not going to let our people just fucking rob innocent fucking old men that are Mexican that are trying to make a living. And see, that same type of energy also has to be applied when something happens to the black side. Like right now, you know, you have people like uh, Lefty uh, lefty Gunplay, rapper, everybody's this dude. He's hyped up. He should be speaking to the youth, talking about, man, this is what you guys need to be doing. You know, American Cholo, who's very good at bringing up controversial issues when it pertains to the Latino community. But sometimes does not always address things that happen in the black community and only addresses it if it benefits both black and brown. Now, this is an incident to where definitely these youngsters, you know what I'm saying, are in the wrong. They almost killed this kid. And, you know, there's probably going to be some consequences legally for this. You know, um, you can't just find ways because there's someone there just to jump on just to do it. Cowards run in packs. You know, we need to teach everyone to be men, how to deal with things a little bit differently. And you never take on and just victimize someone who is not with that life just because they're there and just because you can do it. That's the most cowardice act that you can fucking commit. When you make excuses, it clearly shows that you're living in the past because, yeah, a lot of people just want to use, well, this happened over here and this year. You know what? If that's the case, there's never going to be no healing. There's never going to be no steps forward. There's never going to be no mutual respect. See, there's a lot of changes that have happened for the better, but still... 2024, there's still incidents like this that still occur out there in the streets. And you got some voices out there, right? On both sides. But at times, they only do it when it's they feel a benefit to them. See, there should be no time frame or no time when you do it. You should do it every time you have. If you have a voice within your people and you feel it in your heart, speak it. You know, that's why I fuck with uh, my boy Red Supreme TV. I don't always agree with everything he says. But the last step I do, man, he's going to always say how he feels and he's always going to try to pu- push a narrative that, hey, people, it's not all good. There's still conflict. There's still issues. They're not going to try to sweep the shit under the rug like everybody else, like everybody's all good and everybody's all smiling. Hoodie, Hoodie from the Hood's done a good job, man, of, of I've seen addressing these issues and he does it real calm, man, as well as my, um, you know, up, up north, man, dirty weather, man. You know, they're never, um, shy away from these topics and they always present them man like in ways to which you're gonna have to take take a step back and think you know and um i've been witnessing like i said the last three years the different type of uh you know get downs in southern california street politics and 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 whatnot and trying to understand it because up north it's a little bit different you know we traditionally you know Get along with the blacks. You know what I'm saying? The black factions out here. There could be fun from time to time. There's going to be some issues here and there. But for the most part, people get through it. Down south, they haven't, they haven't found a way to really get through it because they're still holding on to a lot of stuff from the past, which is understandable. But like I said, there needs to be more leaders in the present moment when shit happens. And not just wait till it gets out of hand. And not just address issues that pertain just to its own race. It has to be a, a full-time effort, right, by those that are really trying to make that change. And until that's done, you're going to have the same recycle fucking bullshit that occurs all the time. These future generations could really be the ones t- that create that change. You're already starting to see it in a lot of the people down south that have adapted to the, you know, some of the black culture, some of the black slangs and slogans, you know. Up north, they've done the same thing. Because the relationships were so close and you live in the same neighborhoods. And you get down with a get down. You know, you start to pick up different type of lingo and whatnot. You start to, to uh, pick up certain lingo from the black cultures, from the blacks that you're around. Man, let's just keep it real. I've always said that. They've had a very huge, uh, huge influence on what you see in the northerners up north today. And now with the southerners down south. Now, in some respects, we got to say that they've turned it into their own as far as they've added their own little flavor to it, right? Their own little uh, color to it, their own little sling to some of these things, right? 
But for the most part, they've adapted a lot of things from the black culture, which there's nothing wrong with that, man. But it's unfortunate when you adapt things from a black culture, yet the same token, you turn around and you're quick to disrespect, attack, and put down. Yet you're trying to copy and be just like them. It makes no sense. And see, people fail to realize that when these incidents happen, they don't just sit there and say, okay, fucking black peace stone bloods or fucking, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Avenues Gang or whatever, or fucking East, East Side Longo, whatever it may be. They sit there and put out the whole race as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Blacks, Mexicans, you know? And then that turns around and it builds a whole lot of negative energy for, for everybody, you know, because people feel like this is a whole racial thing. Now, this incident that happened to this um, young black teenager is a scene that's happened all the more, man. It's, it happened a couple months ago at that mall where there was a bunch of black kids attacking a Mexican kid. And then the other locations, it'd be like attacking a black kid or Mexican kid. See, it, it, it's real easy to have that mob mentality when you see others, man, and you watch some of the stuff on social media and you hear what's going on out there in the streets. And these kids want to be just like those that they look up to in their neighborhoods, those that they look up to on social media. Therefore, you know, a lot of these people out there need to set a better example of how to live life, how to be a better person, how to have relations with people outside of your own skin pigment. Because there are Mexican kids that are being attacked like this black kid. There is black kids that are getting attacked the same way over and over again in different areas. You know, it needs to stop. But there is also people who are out there that are interacting, that are doing music together, that are playing sports together. You know, even some go and fight wars for this country together. And you learn to have respect regardless of where one's from, regardless of what they look like. But it takes time, and it's going to take that first step to make those efforts. And I think that there's a lot of podcasters that do have impacts and, you know, that they could be doing something different as opposed to all this fucking negative shit, man. You know, Lefty Gunplay, um, some of these other podcasts, right? You know, look at WAC 100. He's filled with so much fucking drama, man. You know, that it's like he seeks drama. He's no good for a lot of stuff that goes on in these communities. I'm telling you that right now, man. And that's just as a bystander that watches it from a distance. You know, um, you know, I watch this video and I worry about my son, you know, 10 years old. Um, you know, he's a little bit more immature. You know, he has a, he went through global developmental delay. So he's a very bright kid, very smart. He could be immature on certain things or certain things affect him differently. You know, and, um, you know, I wouldn't want... You know, him to be the victim of an attack just because of other people's actions when, you know, he has a a heart that cares for people, regardless of what color skin you are or, or where you're from or whatnot, man. He's purely a good kid. And he kind of reminded me of this kid, you know, a younger version, always trying to do the next, next right thing, trying to help other people and just a joy to be around. That's how my kid is. But he has struggled with certain things socially, you know, um through learning disabilities and stuff like that, right? And I just worry about him that, man, this could be my son like seven years from now at a party, just trying to stand up for his friend, you know, and not trying to attack nobody. And he could be the one being stabbed or jumped. So we got to feel a little bit better for our future, man, for our kids, man. You know, um, this kind of shit, man, you're never going to stop it completely. But, man, if we can get a little bit better hold on it, man, we have a whole brighter future, for all of us. And that's my reaction to this.